let's take a look at the Dynamics GP Fixed Asset Module. Specifically, we're going to look at adding assets. Let's take a look at it. Let's start on the Financial Area page. In Fixed Assets, there's two main screens. One is the General Information screen, and the other is the Depreciation Book screen. So let's take a look at the General Information screen. Here we're going to put in a new asset. And the asset ID is, needs to be entered by the user. It's not automated. So what I generally do is I go to the last ID and then I'm going to increment by one. So in this case I'm going to increment to 00030. So let's type that in. And then there's a suffix there. You can take advantage of that if you want to. You can add additional suffixes to an existing asset ID or just accept the default which I'm going to do. And then I'm going to type in the description of the item I'm purchasing. It's going to be a desktop computer. Let me enter that here. And I can put in an extended description if I want to, um, but let's go down to the class ID. What I've done in my system is I've set up separate class IDs for different types of property. You can take a look at those here. I'm going to select computer equipment and when I do that it defaults in an account group ID. The account group ID includes the number of GL accounts that are going to be used when this asset is used in a transaction. We can click down there and we'll take a look at it. We can change these for a specific asset if we want to, but this is a standard group that's going to be associated with this particular class ID. What I've also done in my system, and I'll show you this a little later, is that I, with each class ID I've specified a depreciation type and a length of service. So we'll take a look at that later. Let's just tab through here. I'm going to put in an acquisition date and the acquisition, acquisition amount here. There we go. Um, I have an opportunity to define the location of any particular asset. There's actually three attributes. I'm going to start over here, location ID, and let me select Atlanta. And then within Atlanta, I have other locations. Let me select this one here. And then I have a structure ID. So here, I can really use it any way I want to, but I'm going to specify a particular department. If I want to, I can specify the custodian. On my system, if I do a lookup, it's going to look at the employee master file within GP. I can select an employee. And you can use this whether you use payroll or not in Dynamics GP. And then I, if I want to, I can specify a manufacturer. I can go to the Go To button here and put in the serial number, model number, and a warranty date if that's important to me. So now basically I've got all the information I need for the general information on this asset. Within fixed assets, I do have the ability to add additional user-defined field. Let's take a look at that. I've not defined these fields, but you can see that there's a number of fields. There's 15. Um, there's different types of fields. There are currency amounts. There's lookups. Um, so you can use these any way you want to to add additional information to your fixed asset. So I'm going to save this now. and A couple things will happen. You'll notice that when I save it, the account group ID goes away. The accounts are still there. They can be accessed by going to this drop down button here and going to account. These are all the accounts. So this is kind of a weird thing in GP when you save the fixed asset, this account group value goes away. You can also take a look at the depreciation records for any asset. If I go to the go to button here, specify book, it'll bring up the depreciation record for this particular asset. In my system, I have three books. I've got AMT, Federal, Internal. You can have as many books as you want to in your system. The internal book here is going to integrate directly with the general ledger, but I can have additional federal and state tax books if I want to maintain those and have those automatically calculated for depreciation. So you can see here on the depreciation record, I've got a depreciation method. This was specified because I had this asset in a particular class ID. Also specifies the useful life of this asset, which in this case is five years. I can change these items if I need to for this particular asset. You'll also notice that there are additional fields I can fill in if the depreciation method requires that. So this has been kind of a quick view of the asset general information window and also the asset book window. There are two setup items I would like to take a look at. So let's take a look at those now. If I scroll down here on my financial area page to fixed assets, I've got the, the book class set up here. And I use this in my demonstration because what this allows me to do is when I add an asset, I assign it to the class ID, it's going to automatically know what the depreciation method is and the length of service. So you can set these up for all your different class IDs. It makes data entry a lot simpler and more, more accurate. Also, I've set up purchase posting accounts, and what these are is if I use accounts payable to purchase assets, 
I can charge that asset or debit that charge to this fixed asset clearing account as opposed to an equipment account or an expense account. And what this may, does is it makes that entry available in fixed assets. When I go to add the asset into fixed assets, that information will be there. It also adds an audit trail back to the payables record that created it. So it makes it handy audit trail, but it also cuts down on the amount of data entry that you'll need. I only have one here in my system, but you can set up specific FA clearing accounts or clearing accounts for any class ID that you might have in your system. I could theoretically set up six different ones and then they would automatically go to that class ID and take in the attributes of that particular class. This has been a quick overview demo of the fixed asset module in Dynamics GP. We looked at adding assets and adding depreciation records, and I showed you a couple setups that will really make the system a lot easier to use. If you're already not using it, you should really take a look at it. It's pretty easy to use. It integrates directly with Dynamics GP in the interface and also with the general ledger. It's really a very good module.